Hello and welcome to Mantra Snacks, bite-sized chunks of soul candy to melt that stress right out of your life. I'm Kisma, founder of Illumination Academy, a place where you can find your mindset to get your life in business set. Today's mantra snack is taffy tolerance. How do you relate to others? Oh, this is such a great question. And I love jamming about relationships because everything in life is relational. Think about all the people you come in contact with, even at the store, the bank, walking the dog, your children's school, your neighbors, etc. People are everywhere. And when you can't relate to people, well, you kind of have a mantra snack problem at hand. But in this snack, we're really going to focus on the people you relate to relatively closely and consistently, intimately even, because when you have more harmonization with these relationships, with these people, you actually have way more ease with other people. The reason being is that there's something that happens to the human field, your energetic field, when you get into arguments, when you fight, when you have anger, jealousy, resentment your energetic field constricts, the frequency goes down, and this lowers your ability to communicate effectively and to connect in a heartfelt manner. Basically, it creates a very low, sparkly, and very less engaging field for communication and connection. Now, it's fascinating because human beings are such interesting, amazing, and incredibly surprising beings, including yourself. And the truth of the matter is, my friend, you can never really know what's going on inside someone else's head and heart. Even if you could know, it doesn't really matter because it could all change on a dime anyway. So like this Taffy Tolerance guy, I was thinking, what's so cool about Taffy? It stretches, it's flexible, it's pliable, it's sweet. So if you have an intention to have great relationships You as well need to be flexible, pliable, sweet at times, but also kind. So let's first look at this flexibility piece. You know, expectations exist. They exist in work. They exist in marriages and partnerships and communities. The thing that happens, though, in relationships is that when you expect another human that you know pretty well to be different than who they are. When you're like, wow, if that Betty over there could just be ABC, then I'll be XYZ. You're putting your happiness on the change of another human being. That is massive codependency. And that human being may or may not change. So putting your sustainable happiness in someone else's personality, conditioned personality, is going to disappoint you. And that disappointment is your own because you're expecting them time and time again to be different. Now, bringing in the flexibility is important for you because it allows your container, this energetic container that you have to expand. It allows you to hold the space for your own excellence, for your own human code of mastery. And when you do this for you, you're holding the space for others to elevate as well, except you're not attached to it. And this is a key piece. Whenever we're attached and we have really strong expectation for someone else or even a situation to be different than it is, you will be disappointed and you're not being flexible. So you can choose to stay disappointed, you can set yourself up to be disappointed, or you can have a choice to be flexible, to be discerning. You can even choose to accept this particular human that may push your buttons as they are in the moment. But know that the way they are is their gig. It's not yours. And one of the most amazing things about building relationships is knowing that everyone is navigating this world. And this world goes upside down and all around over and over and over again. Some people are navigating it better than others, and some people are really struggling. So when you have this sense of flexibility, when you have this sense of, hmm, I wonder what's going on in Betty's life over there, you're more discerning, you're more accepting, but you're not entering their drama or trauma. And that's another big key is that 
Avoid wishing anyone harm. Avoid entering anyone's drama or trauma, but wish them well. Wish them success. This is utilizing the divine law of increase towards another human being. Does that make sense? So it's cutting the cords to the drama and the trauma, but wishing them well. And by doing this, it's like you can be a catalyst for excellent relationships. It starts again with knowing who you're dealing with, understanding their nature, knowing that you do not have the inner information in their head or heart, and that you are simply going to be aware that you're going to get the vibe of where they are, and you are going to know that that is the human you're dealing with. Do they complain? Are they positive? Are they on time? Are they late? Your observation and your objectivity will lead you to understand who you're dealing with. And then you can choose to either stay in that relationship, to have some distance to it, or to do a little work and sparkle and magic so it elevates to a higher connection. Now, you might not always be as sweet as Taffy here, but you can be kind. And kindness is often misinterpreted. People think if you're kind, you have to be nice and bubbly and like a cheerleader. And actually, that's not true. Kindness is honest, yet calm. Kindness is being able to speak your opinion, but in a way where you have an understanding of how you're making that person feel, right? Because when we let go of thinking about how we're going to make someone feel, we're actually not kind at all. We're just being selfish. Kindness is about opening a window of thought or a contemplation for someone by holding the space that you can be accepting and they can elevate. Kindness is not criticizing. It's being truthful. I like to call it a neutral state of being receptive, of holding the possibility and the potentiality for another human being, for the relationship, but doing your part of the work. Now, a lot of this, my friend, is done by leading by example, taking care of your life, you doing your work on your journey. It reminds me of my great teacher, Swami Partasarati at the Vedanta Academy. And I'm going to be there and we'll be recording Mantra Snacks there. But he made a statement once on an interview. He said, I could never ask my students to wake up at 4.30 a.m. and study if I didn't wake up at 4.30 a.m. and study. And I thought, this is such a fine example because he's such a self-realized soul. He actually doesn't need to study anymore, but he does it by setting an example for all the students at his ashram. So who is around you that you want to set this example of being a fine, flexible, and kind human being? Now, I have a couple tips for you if you're interested. One way to elevate these relationships and really get the most out of the relationship for you and the other person is avoid offering advice. Oh, this is a tough one, especially if you're in the coaching industry or a service industry and you have friends in that industry, you probably see people coaching each other and offering advice all the time. It begins to get so heavy. If you're going to give someone advice, they need to ask for it. And if you're in the coaching industry or healing, they need to pay you for it. When you offer unsolicited advice, it just becomes controlling and you want them to be different than who they are. But what you can do is give information. And what I mean by that is be authentic, be relational, share something even be vulnerable. When you're able to listen to a friend or a colleague going through a difficult time, rather than telling them what they should do or the next best way to get rid of the flu or a cold, just be vulnerable in a sense of sharing an experience that you went through. I do this a lot with my daughter. If I'm talking to somebody whose kids are getting ready to graduate high school and perhaps the parents are feeling nervous or sad, I'll just share what it was like for me when Zoe was getting ready to not just graduate high school and go to college, but leave the country. That's the best I can do for them is connect, is to communicate 
and to allow them to have their experience. Because that's just it, my friend. It is their experience. Now, if you want to continually go in and fix people, all of a sudden, that experience becomes yours. And that's a very interesting karmic loop to engage in. I recommend you stay on your line of the tracks and they stay on their side of the tracks and each of you does your piece to keep your world nice and sparkly and clean. Now, if you do something like uh, overstep, um, maybe you found that you've been really pushy with somebody or you've even gotten angry, clean it up the best you can. And often this is done through honesty. Hey, Betty, I was really hurt and this is why I got angry. I hope you can forgive me. It's so simple, right? But many people want to complicate their relationships. They just can't help themselves. They want to get into the gossip, the drama, and the trauma because it becomes a distraction to your own work, to your own journey. And frankly, when we get distracted and get entangled in other people's stuff, it becomes way heavier and way slower to get done in life what we're here to do. So avoid overstepping, avoid giving advice without being asked, and do lead by example. Do offer kindness, flexibility, true information. Be connective. Take care of yourself. You know, when you decide and do your part in having a resilient field, when you decide and do your part to be kind in your disposition, in your personality, when you make a choice to master yourself, to navigate life in a clear, calm, and certain way, you hold this really beautiful, fine example of a human being. So avoid the freak out, my friend, and avoid the gossip and stay far, far away from the drama and the trauma. You just end up throwing a bunch of negative energy around and that doesn't help anyone. It's kind of like stale taffy. So the real piece here is you have a role on this planet. You have a life. And when you focus on every thought, every choice, every step, when you focus on how you interact with people through flexibility, through kindness, but yet strong and certain in your beliefs, you are elevating not just yourself, but the people around you and the planet. And if you find yourself in some kind of awkward, contentious, or argumentative conversation, pause. Is it really important? Are you arguing and fighting because of your ego and you just have the need to be right to show them? Or is it a very important point that you're willing to go the distance to? When you know the answer, you can decide. But I'm going to recommend that if you have to choose between being right and being kind, be kind. Because the fact of the matter is, our world needs kindness. It needs flexibility, and it needs people like you who are willing to hold the space for an evolution of their field, their personality, and to connect with their higher selves. Everyone can use a little soul candy in their lives, so you can be that for someone else. Namaste.